the, really the first defense is to apply repellents to yourself, to your clothing, uh, on your children or your pets. The one that we tend to rely on more is one where the active ingredient is called permethrin. Uh, permethrin is, is different from all the others in that it only goes on clothing. It doesn't go on skin. Um, however, you can apply it to a wide variety of clothing, anything from uh, rubber boots to cotton fabrics, wool, fleece, Gore-Tex. The one drawback to permethrin is that when it's in its liquid form, it can pose um, harm to cats. Uh, usually folks have a period of about 24 hours after application where it then dries and then it's very effective against tick and mosquitoes where it's good for about six or seven wash cycles. Let's say you spray that on your boots. Yep. How long until you respray? Well, if they are uh, clothing that gets wet a lot, you may end up needing to respray within a few days. DEET, you can spray directly on your skin, right? Yes. Generally is recommended, however, not to take this and spray it directly on, like perfume, but you would want to spray it on your hands, which you can then pat along open skin. DEET has been thoroughly studied for a long time. Um, it's been used by the military for probably going back to the 1960s as a repellent to protect soldiers. And generally, there seems to be a very low risk to people. What about this one? I don't think I've ever seen this before. That is picaridin. It is another synthetic compound similar to DEET, devised a few years ago. Mostly, I think, devised because people were wary about using things like DEET. Picaridin, though, is a synthetic. It uh, goes, again, on both skin and fabric. Usually very effective. However, like DEET, you would need to reapply after about four hours or so, if you're doing any kind of real activity where you're sweating or if you're out in the rain. So. We see all of these home remedies, natural yeah. products. How do you feel about a lot of those? The problem with a lot of the botanicals, and most of these home products are devised from plant-based compounds. Most people devise them because they're worried about synthetic chemicals, which can be valid. However, um, in general, there is a real lack of uh, efficacy data. So we're talking about science where the data has been proven that this compound actually controls or repels ticks or mosquitoes. But a recent study that talks about the effect of some of these botanicals is that botanicals are very finicky. And so depending on how the botanical is processed, so if you're using garlic oil, for instance, as a repellent, it depends whether it was processed from fresh garlic, from dried garlic, whether it was immersed in alcohol and it was uh, a derivative derived out of that, all of that affects how effective that may be to repel ticks or mosquitoes. So it's, it's quite complex and probably not as simple as just cooking up a remedy in, in your kitchen. What it, when you guys are out in the field all the time, yeah. specifically looking for ticks, how yes. do you protect yourselves when you're out in the field? So if we're out doing field work, we have long sleeve pants on pretty much all summer. Uh, we have these things that are tick gaiters, but if it's a particularly wet day, we may rely on high boots that you can then pull up that your pants can slide into. 20 years ago, I remember playing in the woods and not thinking twice about ticks. Yeah. Now it's, you, it's the one thing you cannot not think about when you go yeah. outside in the summertime in Maine. Right. What has changed over the years? The first big picture thing that people can look at would be something like our, our changing climate or weather patterns, which may be affecting ticks. Uh, we certainly see that when we have in many recent years are good examples. We have much milder falls and earlier springs. That means we have a much longer tick season. We have a much higher overall deer herd than we did 50 years ago. Obviously people care about ticks because they care about Lyme disease and the diseases that ticks carry. Have we gotten better about diagnosing Lyme disease or about treating it? Yeah, I think, I think both uh, the diagnosis and the treatment is, is pretty good from a public health standpoint. I think a lot, of, a lot of stuff comes out because there's a lack of information about when you should actually test, for instance. Um, many of the current tests that are out now are antibody tests and they actually need to be, people actually need to wait a couple of weeks before getting tested to get a reliable result. However, if the test is given within that period of time, it's actually fairly fairly reliable. You said your phone has been ringing off the hook. Before someone finds a tick on them and freaks out, yes. are there things they should be looking for? Are there symptoms of, the, of? Well, the one thing to look for is if you can look at the tick. Um, if you notice any white on the back and you see a, a glaring white dot or white lines, 
that is going to immediately tell you that it's not a deer tick. And again, the deer tick is still our primary tick for medical or veterinary issues here in the state. For the most part, should you only really worry about a tick bite if you see redness? Some people, and not everyone, but some people get a really strong reaction to the tick bite itself. Not everyone, but some people that get a really strong reaction to that tick bite may actually get a raised, swelled area at the site of the bite as soon as you take a tick off. That has nothing to do with Lyme disease. That is just a reaction kind of similar to someone reacting to a black fly bite. Most symptoms for tick-borne diseases will tend to show up um, a few days, a few to several days after removing a tick. Sometimes as much as a month out, but it's not immediate. So if people are taking a tick off and within an hour or two they get a raised red area at the site of the bite, that is probably just a reaction to the tick bite itself. 